a while since I put up a video, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's been a really long time. Um, admittedly, my personal life got really, really chaotic. My work life got even more chaotic, and I've pretty much been sidelined for a while because, <sighs> honestly, trying to motivate myself to make another video was hard, and I was struggling to just get things edited, and guys, I'm sorry it took so long. Honestly, I planned this video out well before Halloween and then never quite got around to finishing the editing. The editing is going to look a little bit sloppy, and I apologize for that. I just wanted to get it out, but um, it might be a little while before I do a real dedicated video moving forward just because I don't have a lot of time. Honestly, my resources have been stretched really, really paper thin. I've been stressed out. I haven't been sleeping. I know it's not an excuse for not putting out any content, and thank you to everyone who's continued to watch what I've been putting out, but I'm going to be a little bit more sporadic just until I have everything figured out. But in any case, enjoy this video because I uh, got this one done. Now, understandably, there is no concrete course that you can take at any university on how to make a fursuit, soup to nuts, and all of the really intricate details and knowledge points that you'd really need to execute something the way your favorite fursuiters and fursuit makers make them. However, there's a couple courses you can take that'll give you great uh, pointers and information to start with, so let's get into some of those. Now, not to say that fursuits are necessarily just costumes, but costume design and fashion are definitely a large part of what helps people create fursuits. Learning how to sew, learning how to pattern, learning how to put everything together from original concept to ed end product, it's pretty important. And while you may not need this kind of course to create a fursuit, it definitely helps. Stuff like this helps you learn different sewing techniques, different ways to stitch, different ways to construct in general, and can give you an overall broader knowledge of how to put one thing together to create an end product. It's not required, but it certainly is very, very helpful, especially in courses that emphasize costume design and designs for the stage. You get to learn a couple tips and tricks uh, here and there that help you execute something maybe in a way that you didn't initially think of and might simplify the overall process. Not saying you need this course necessarily, but it could definitely be really helpful, so check it out. Now, in the same vein, visual effects, special effects, and overall visual art and design is also a great thing you can take a little bit of time to study to get a better idea of how to execute a real 3D character that you'll be portraying, creating, or hoping to sell. While special effects usually is thought of more to be, you know, the prosthetic makeup, the specialized costumes for movies and other different stage applications, it actually does tie into fursuiting somewhat. Some people may not know, but initially when Jurassic Park was conceptualized and put together, not all of the dinosaurs you see are CG, and actually a lot of them used puppetry and humans inside costumes to execute the characters. One very notable example of this is the raptors. They actually had a raptor suit with a human inside acting out the part, which, okay, it's not exactly fursuiting, but it's pretty darn close. And some of the techniques that Stan Winston School actually applied for this are not dissimilar from what you'd see in quad suits and other performance suits where the human has a bit more of a direct interaction with the character and those around them. Additionally, just from a purely technique standpoint, Looking at the things that Stan Winston School or, you know, even um, the Henson Studio has put together for puppets and other animatronics could really help you understand how to create some textures, depth, and other techniques to really bring characters to life. If you're interested in realistic, definitely look at studios that create monsters for movies because there may be a technique for getting the perfect dragon scale, fur, eyeball, or articulated movement that you may not have thought of initially. But, you know, it might, help be, it might help you put one thing into your character that actually allows them to emote better or just look more realistic. If you're into Toonie, 
definitely, definitely, definitely check out these studios because not all monsters are realistic. There are definitely some movies that go in the more camp category that may have some techniques used on them that speak directly to your character. A good comparison I can draw here is looking at this, some of the more grotesque and goofy monsters that appear in some of your movies and how they may have influenced a couple of different suit makers. One that comes directly to mind is Fleece Rot, who does very grotesque, exaggerated characters, but you can definitely see some of the influences in the way things are articulated, put together, and stitched up to really emphasize all of those aspects while still creating a character that is believable to a degree and a really great performance art piece in on the whole essentially. Now some fursuits have technological advancements in them that do lend to a different type of performance. What do I mean here? So some of you may have seen my my video on fursuit advancements in technology that I think are really, really cool, and this ties directly into it. If you're the kind of person that doesn't just want to throw an LED in the eye and call it a day in terms of how you light a suit, there are actually some great resources in terms of electrical engineering and even some coding and programming that could help you add that one aspect to your character that you really, really want. Adafruit Industries has some amazing tech kits that are great for adding really, really specific and interesting aspects to any creation, fursuit or not, and getting a solid handle on how to program something to do exactly what you want it to do could really help to get that one aspect you haven't quite been able to nail. One actual creature type that does lend itself very much to this are protogens and primogens, creatures that are inherently technological. If you want to do a more simplified outfit where, you know, it's just a basic LED light, there is nothing wrong with that. But if you really want to delve into some of the technical aspects of it, the actual lighting rigs that give it a more mechanical feel, this could be a field that would really help you out. Learning how to program those very specific commands into a little chip and then getting it to execute on a LED screen to really show the effect you want is definitely something you can learn in either of these disciplines and if that's something you really really want absolutely take some time and look for a course that teaches that and apply it to your own work as you see fit now this speaks directly to anyone who is getting into fursuiting specifically to sell fursuits if you're just making suits for yourself for cosplay conventions or just for your own gratification then you know, maybe you don't need to take this, but if you really want to eventually sell your suits and make it your bread and butter income source, then definitely take some time to look for a small business class or course or something that teaches managing money and really building out your business. It will only help you. Understanding how to price your work, you know, how to organize your actual portfolio, how to manage difficult situations and how to really make a functioning business are really critical if you want to go and sell your work. Now I'm not saying that you have to sell your work, but if it's something that you want to do in the long run, please at least take the time to learn about some different ways to budget, set prices, handle difficult situations like shipping and what have you, and really invest some time into learning how to run a business before you open one. It can only help. Admittedly, there's always growing pains whenever you try to run your own business, but you can definitely minimize them by taking some time to actually study how to do so. Some college classes have this, you can learn online, and there's plenty of resources. So, like with anything that I've mentioned here, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to go to a formalized school to do this. Just seek some education in whatever form you are able to access, and take a little bit of time and invest. So these aren't all the classes you could possibly use to better your skills and you know your eventual business if that's what you want, but these are just a couple that struck me as great resources when you're getting started. Do you have any other courses or fields of study that you think would be really helpful? Leave in the comments down below. I'm sure it could definitely help anyone who watches this channel and wants to do that eventually. At any rate, have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!